praise the Lord. Praise the mighty Jesus. Let us begin to give praises unto the Lord Almighty, the Father of all fathers. Let us begin to bless His holy name, the one that created the fathers that we are celebrating. Let us give that God praise this morning. Let us give Him all the honor. Let us give Him all the adoration. Praise the everlasting Father. Praise the King of glory. Praise the Lord of Lord. Praise the Almighty Father, King of glory. The one that counted our fathers to be alive, the one that counted our mothers to be alive, the one that counted our children to be alive. Give him praise, give him honor, give him all adoration. Bless the everlasting Father, the King of glory and the Lord of Lord, the omnipotent, the omniscient God. Give him praise, give him honor, say, Father, I thank you. Ancient of days, I appreciate you. Ancient of days, I bless your name. Tell him thank you for all the wonderful things he has done in your life. Tell him thank you for his glorious power, for his mercy, and for his loving kindness. Bless his holy name. Give him praise, give him honor, give him all adoration. Worship him and exalt him. Say, Father, we appreciate you. King of glory, we say thank you, O Lord, my Father. Begin to appreciate the Lord Almighty. Appreciate him for all the wonderful things he has done. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have given thanks. I want us to appreciate the Lord Almighty one more time for our fathers. Appreciate God, whoever that is a father to you, appreciate God on his behalf this morning. Understand one thing today, you cannot be who you are today without your fathers. You cannot be who you are today without your parents. So I want you to appreciate God Almighty on behalf of whoever that you see as a father. Appreciate God, whoever, give him thanks, appreciate him, even for the one that brought you to life. That Lord, I thank you for my father that begot me. I thank you, Lord, my father, King of glory, for my fathers that trained me. I thank you, Lord, my father, for the fathers that I look up to. I thank you, Lord, my father, for the fathers, oh Lord, my father, that trained me spiritually and physically. That Lord, I thank you, Lord, my father, King of glory. Thank you for sending them to our ways. Thank you, Lord, my father, that they will eat the fruit of their labor. Appreciate God, appreciate God, appreciate God, appreciate God. Bless the, bless the name of the Lord on their behalf. Thank them that thank the Lord the Father. I thank you, Lord, my Father, in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have given thanks. Even Amen. despite even despite today's Father's Day, I want us to appreciate our mothers. The father cannot be a father without the mother. Because a father, a father, it says there's a quote that says, Behind every successful man, there is a woman. I want us to appreciate. God. Another quote said, behind every successful man, there is a mighty God. But let's appreciate our mothers as well. It is the work of our mothers that made our fathers to be effective. Please let us appreciate them one more time. Let us begin to appreciate God on their behalf, those that stood as a mother for us. Even some of us that have lost our mothers or lost our father, those that stood in the gap for them while they are away, that Lord, I thank you for their life. I appreciate you, Lord, my Father, King of glory. Bless the name of the Lord. I appreciate the everlasting Father, King of glory. I appreciate the Lord of Lord on their behalf. The Lord, I thank you for my mother. I thank you, Lord, my Father, for our spiritual mothers. Oh, Lord, my Father, King of glory. Everlasting Father, we say thank you. We thank you. We appreciate you, Lord. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have given thanks. I would like to use this opportunity to wish all our fathers a happy Father's Day. God, by his wisdom, used men to separate a day like this to celebrate our fathers. The reason why days like these are important in the journey of a man is that God understands the sacrifices of our parents. And God taught it in his heart that a day should be separated for them to be appreciated. Because if you think about it, you and I will not be in this world without our parents. If you think about it, those people that value us today, those people that are calling us sons and daughter, those people that are saying well done to you, those people that are appreciating God on your behalf, it is still because of your foundation of your parents that brought you up. Because if they didn't bring you up, those people that see the good in you will not see it. So that is why by the wisdom of God, 
these days are separated to appreciate sleepless nights, sacrifices when there is none, feeding us, clothing us, putting roof over our head. So I want to use this opportunity to appreciate all our fathers and also all our mothers for all they have been doing for us, for all the wonderful things they have been doing for us in pain, in trouble, in sleepless nights, that Lord, we appreciate them. Happy Father's Day to every father and happy Father's Day to fathers to be. I pray that the crown of a father will not be taken from me in the name of Jesus. I pray that as you are celebrated today, your children will celebrate you in the name of Jesus. The Lord will empower all our mothers and all our fathers in the name of Jesus and the grace of God will be upon their life in Jesus' name. Amen. In Jesus' name, we are praying. Amen. Amen. Let's turn our Bible to the book of Genesis chapter 27. Genesis chapter 27, verse 1 to 29. Genesis 27, verse 1 to 29. Because it's a very long, long verse, I'm going to read from verse 1 to 4, and then read verse 16, read verse 19, and then read verse 27 to 29. Genesis 27 from verse 1 to 29. I read, Now it came to pass, when Isaac was old and his eyes were so dim that he could not see, that he called Esau his older son and said to him, My son. And he answered him, Here I am. Then he said, Behold, now I am old. I do not know the day of my death. Now, therefore, please take your weapons your squiver and your bow and go out to the field and hunt game for me and make me a savory food such as I love and bring it to me that I may eat that my soul may bless you before I die. Verse 19 Verse 19 So Jacob said to his father I am Esau your firstborn I have done just as you told me. Please arise, sit and eat my game, that your soul may bless me. Verse 27 to 29. And he came near and kissed him, and he smelled the smell of his clothing, and blessed him, and said, Surely the smell of my son is like the smell of a field, which the Lord has blessed. Therefore may God give you of the dew of heaven. I pray for all our fathers this morning. The Lord will give you all the dues of heaven in the name of Jesus. He says, Therefore may God give you of the dew of heaven and of the fatness of the heads. I pray for all our fathers this morning and our mothers. The Lord will give you the fatness of the earth in the name of Jesus. And plenty of grain and wine. I pray on this earth as we celebrate our fathers today you will eat plenty of grain and wine in the name of jesus in all your labor the lord almighty will reward you mightily in the name of jesus he says let people serve you and nation will bow down to you i pray for every one of us including our fathers today men will serve god in you in the name of jesus nations will bow down to your God in the name of Jesus. When they see you, they will see Jesus in you in the name of Jesus. He says you will be a master over your brethren and let your mother's son bow down to you. I decree those that need to bow down for you, for you to be lifted high. The Lord Almighty will cause them to bow down in the name of Jesus. He says cursed be everyone that causes you. I decree over everyone's life as we are celebrating our fathers today. Anyone that causes you, the Lord will curse them in the name of Jesus. Anybody that causes our children, the Lord will curse them in the name of Jesus. Anyone Amen. that causes our mothers, the Lord will curse them in the name of Jesus. Halakuta Maria Bosunda Kale Iribotoka Alia Makusinda Kapa. Every cause of the fathers upon our children, the blood of Jesus Christ, cancel it in the name of Jesus. Amen. He says, Amen. 
blessed be those that bless you i decree this morning whoever that blesses their father i decree blessings will come after you in the name of jesus Amen. Anyone that blesses their father, I decree the heavens of blessing will open for you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Anyone that blesses our children, our mothers, I decree blessings will follow you and overtake you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. May the Lord Almighty bless his word in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. The topic Amen. of today's sermon is the topic of today's sermon is the authority of a father. The authority of a father. We will see in that scripture Jacob J Isaac blessed Jacob when he was about to die. And there was no way in scripture that says Z Jacob fasted or did vigil or asked God to give him authority to bless his children. But he knows that there is an authority a father carries that brings blessing upon the children. And you will see from that scripture that he told Jacob to make him a meal that will bless his soul the meal that he loves that gives us the understanding the keys that brings blessing out of our father you will do things that our father loves we will do things that blesses their soul so that they can bless us there is an authority god has given our fathers there is an authority that God has given our fathers over our children to impact blessings upon their life, to equip them, to edify them, to admonish them. God has released that authority upon our fathers. That is why sometimes I look at our children when they begin to become too familiar with their fathers, they become too familiar with their parents to the extent they begin to disrespect them. To the extent they begin to dishonor them look if you want to make it in life if you want to go far in life you must ensure you receive blessing from your parents consistently you must ensure i'm speaking to you from experience if your parents are not able to bless you, it is you, things will just be unnecessarily difficult. For almost nine years, I refused to speak to my father, the father that begot me to this head. Nine years, I refused to speak. He calls me almost every day. I will not pick up the phone. Please, children of God, any prophecy you receive that breaks your home, that breaks your family, that breaks your marriage, is not from God. The purpose of prophecy is for edification, not to destroy. And I ran away from my father. And the more I was running away, the more things were harder for me. The more I was hiding, the more things were becoming more difficult for me. Because scripture as you, you cannot break scripture for anybody. It says, honor your father and your mother and it will be well with you and your days will be long. I didn't honor my father, I didn't honor my mother, and the negative began to happen. One of my mentors called me and said to me, 
opened the scripture to me and said, why can't you just call your parents? I said, no, I'm not calling. I'm not calling. Admonished me with scripture. I didn't know that the more I'm doing it, the more I'm entering into the pit. Understand one thing today. If you cannot honor your parent, nobody will honor you. If you cannot respect your parents, no respect can come to you. Until, until God dealt with me. He humbled me. He humbled me. And after the ninth year, I called my father. Even I didn't even call. I went to see him. And he received me with an open hand. My son, welcome back after nine years. But oh, believe me, sir, I am speaking as, as a testifier at this hour that the day I step my foot and begin to obey scripture by honoring my fathers and my mothers, including my father-in-law and my mother-in-law, my life began to change for better. I encourage us with children today. If you know you want to go somewhere, mend the fence with your parents. Mend the fence with your parents. I understand. Not all parents act like parents. Yes, he says a man's enemy are from his household. Yes, it is possible. But scripture will not break for anybody. You still have to honor them. Honor them with what you have. Honor them with your words. Honor them by caring for them. Because it is the only commandment of God that comes with a promise. It is out of all the Ten Commandments you read, it is the only one that came with a promise that if you do this thing, it will be well between your business, it will be well between your marriage, it will be well between your career, it will be well with you anywhere you go, it will be well with you with your health. And your days will be long. Do you know how many young people that their destiny are truncated because of dishonoring their parents. Do you know how many people that just die because they are rude to their parents? You must. Our fathers carry an authority. Now, who is a father? Who is a father? Number one, the father of all fathers, our creator. The first person in the Trinity. The one who knows our beginning and our end. The one who is taught towards us is good and not evil. The one who created heaven and the earth and all his fullness thereof. That is our number one father. The Lord God Almighty. He is our father. He is the one that created us. He is the one that has proposed good for our destiny. And that is why he is the number one father. He is the father of all our fathers. Number two, who is a father? A father is a male parent that begot you to this world. That begot you to this world. Matthew chapter 1, verse 1 to 2. Matthew chapter 1, verse 1 to 2. He made us to understand, speaking about the genealogy of our Lord Jesus Christ. Matthew chapter 1, verse 1, it says, The book of the genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Abraham begot Isaac. Isaac begot Jacob. Jacob begot Judah and his brothers. So whoever that begots you is your father. Number three, who is the father? A father is the person that feeds, trains, 
mentors you both physically and spiritually. Anybody that mentors you, trains you, is a father to you. Esther chapter 1, verse 5 to 7. Esther chapter 1, verse 5 to 7. Sorry, Esther chapter 2, verse 5 to 7. It says, In Susha, the citadel, there was a certain Jew whose name was Mordecai, the son of Jahe, the son of Shimon, the son of Kish, a Benjamite. Kish has been carried away from Jerusalem with the captive who had been captured with Jeremiah, the king of Judah, who Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, had carried away. And Mordecai had brought up Adazar, that is Esther, his uncle's daughter, for she had neither father nor mother. The young woman was lovely and beautiful when her father and mother died. Mordecai took her as his own daughter. So whoever that trains you, feeds you, mentors you, both physically and spiritually, he is a father. And that is what Mordecai was to Esther. Acknowledge that. 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 2 and 1 Timothy chapter 1 verse 2. I put, I, Paul saying to Timothy, my son, my son, my beloved son in the faith. Paul trained Timothy and he had, the, he had, he called Timothy his son because he trained him in the Lord. And that is where we bring him fathers coming, those people that train or maybe perhaps we lost our parents, we lost someone one way or the other, and they take the place of our parents, these are fathers. Your spiritual, your spiritual fathers, they are fathers to you. They are fathers to you. But, out, apart from the Lord Almighty, who is our father of all fathers, the father that begot you is very important. Every other person is by adoption. The one that begot you is very important for your life, for your destiny, because God has put the authority in them. What authority? What are the authority of a father? What are the authority of a father? Number one, a father has the authority to bless. He has the authority to bless their children. I'm speaking to our fathers this morning. Regardless of what our children do, please always speak blessing to their life. Don't ever curse your child because whenever you curse them, you are the one that will reap it. Always blessing. Even when they seem not to look that way, speak blessing to their life. You will be great. You will go higher. Your destiny will speak. You will not be a disobedient. Always bless your children. Genesis 49, verse 1 to 27. Genesis 49, verse 1 to 27. Jacob gave his last blessing to his children. He blessed his children and cursed some of them. He cursed his firstborn. He cursed. Genesis 49, verse 3. He says, Reuben, you are my firstborn, my might and the beginning of my strength the excellency of dignity and the excellency of power. Unstable as water, you shall not excel because you went up to your father's bed, then you defiled it. He went up to my couch. He said they shall not excel. And that is what happened when you read the book of Deuteronomy. The, the family of Reuben were few. When they count them, they are always the smallest. 
because a father has spoken a curse. It took Moses in Deuteronomy chapter 33 verse 6 to renounce that curse. I decree over all the life of our children this morning, every curse that your father must have spoken upon your destiny, whether consciously or unconsciously, by the reason of the anointing, that curse is broken in the name of Jesus. Any offenses that you might have committed as a child and has brought your parents to curse you, I decree the mercy of God will renounce that curse in the name of Jesus. Fathers, be careful to always bless. Don't curse your children. Because whatever you say to their life will affect their journey. Children, you will see when, when Jacob was speaking his last word, the son Reuben went to sleep with his father's wife. And the father kept quiet, and the father knew the authority he carried. And he waited when it was about time to release blessing. Instead of blessing, he was releasing curse upon the child. Because he knows the authority a father carries. Children, be careful. Don't always offend your father that will cause them to speak negatively to your life. I pray instead of course you will be blessed in the name of Jesus number two what authority does a father have the father has the authority to name he has the authority to name I believe we have spoken about name already name is not only the name they have given to you not only that Name also means that what your father calls you by. Fathers, please, let's be very careful. What we say, this boy is too stubborn. This boy is disobedient. He's a rascal. Look at his big head. Look at the Please, what you name them, that is what they will be. Baby, whether you are joking, whether you are serious, always name them well. Look at Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1, verse 59. 59 to 66. It says, So it was on the eighth day that they came to circumcise the child, and they would have called him by the name of his father, Zacharias. His mother answered and said, No, he shall be called John. But they said to her, there is no one among your relatives who is called by this name. So they made a sign to his father, what will you have him called? And he asked for a writing tablet and wrote saying, his name is John. John means graced by God. Graced by God. The father does, the father because that angel has appeared to them and given the child a name. If they have given that child the name that it was not, he will join, we will not yet join the Baptist today. Fathers, what do you call your son? Fathers, what do you call your daughter? Every time my father-in-law calls to speak to me, he will always say, KBAC. He will always say it. KBAC means king. And as they are saying it, that is what I'm going to become. That is what I will become. Always call, allow your parents to bless you. Let them speak well of you. Don't allow negative words coming out of our parents. Number three, what authority do a father have? Our father have the authority to train to discipline and to admonish us admonish us in the lord it is the father's responsibility to ensure that our children are trained 
in the Lord. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 4. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 4. I read. It says, And you fathers do not provoke your children to wrath, but bring them up in training and in admonition of the Lord. In training and in admonition of the Lord. It is the responsibility of our fathers to train our children in the Lord. Train them in the way of the Lord. Train them to pray. Train them to fast. Train them to live a life in the way of the Lord. Don't say that we are in England. We let them become what they want to become. Don't say because they are, they, 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 you think, um, train them. And the Lord Almighty will bless us in the name of Jesus. Fathers, use your authority well so that I can be well with you. The authority of a father is that they carry an authority that comes with a promise. An authority that comes with a promise. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 2. Honor your father and your mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with you and you may live long on earth. They have that honor them. And this will happen in your life. It will be well with you. It will be well with you. It will be well with you in the name of Jesus. If you are here, perhaps you have you have cursed your child, or perhaps as a child, as a children, you have offended your father, and you want to retrace your step back to God, or perhaps you have not been honoring your fathers or your mother. This is the opportunity for you to retrace back your step. Begin to honor them and honor them. When you obey scripture, God is pruned to fight for you. If you are here and you want to give your life to Jesus or perhaps you want to re, 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 retrace your spirit back to it, please say this short prayer with me. And say, Lord Jesus, forgive all my sins. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness. I know that I have come short of your glory. Please give me grace to live a holy life. I know you died and you rose up the third day. Father, please give me the grace, O Lord, to continue in you. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, we are free. If you have said this short prayer with me, please find the Bible Believing Church. And I believe and I know that the grace of God will work for you there in the name of Jesus. Please, children, or any young one, make sure you buy something for your father. Buy something for your father and tell them to bless you. My father-in-law has blessed me this morning. I'm going to call my father after the service to bless me. I'm going to call my spiritual father to bless me. It is important for them to bless. Whatever they say, write it down and see if it will not happen in your life. Praise the Lord.